What is pure? This word pure, purity is often used. Purity of mind and soul, pure ghee, a pure sample. What does it mean? In our common language, pure only means unadulterated. When there is nothing else mixed in it. However, in science it has a different meaning. You must be enjoying your snack normally called mixture. Mixture has many things. It has some ground nuts, it has some savai, it also has some other like say cornflakes and there can be so many different type of pulses in it. So, what is a mixture? Next we have to understand what is a mixture. A mixture constitutes more than one substance, but in its pure form. So, you can also say as you learnt in junior classes when two or more substances are mixed without any definite proportion what we get is a mixture. Mixtures are constituted by more than one kind of pure form of matter and this pure form of matter is called a substance. So, mixtures are constituted by more than one form of pure form of matter and that is called a substance. So, we can say mixtures are constituted by more than one substance. Now, let us take four beakers A, B, C and D. Fill them with water. In first case, we can put one spatula of copper sulfate, only one spatula. In second, we can put two. In third, in addition to copper sulfate, we can also put KMnO4, that is. What is KMnO4? Potassium permanganate. Now, what we find is that when we dissolve these substances, in the first two cases, the copper sulfate completely disappears and we get a blue color solution. Then we can filter it. For filtering, we need a filter paper and a funnel. Take a strip of a filter paper. With the help of a pencil, mark a level at about 3 centimeters. Then put a drop of ink. Now dip it in water. As the water will rise up, you will find this ink will spread here. And then you will realize that ink is not made up of only one component. Even when we want to study which pigments are present in a leaf, we use the same method and this is called chromatography. So, which property has been utilized? The rate at which a liquid flows. This method can be used to separate colors from a dye pigments of leaf and drugs from blood so this method is also very useful evaporation is a good method but in this one component is lost and that is water. But what if we want both the components? 
or especially if we want absolutely pure form of water, then what do we do? Then the method used is distillation. In distillation, we take a mixture in a round bottom flask pass the delivery tube in a condenser or we can simply put beaker in a bigger beaker containing ice. Now, what will happen when you will heat this mixture? Water will evaporate pass through this as it will pass through the condenser. What will happen to vapors? They will condense and then it can be collected in a beaker and salt will be left behind. Now, actually speaking rain is a method of a natural method of distillation that is why rain water is considered the purest form, but human beings have not even left that pure. These days what we get is not rain, but acid rain because all the acidic oxides are getting mixed in water. Now, what are physical changes? When a change occurs and only the physical properties change and not the chemical composition or the chemical properties, then it is called a physical change. Like when ice changes to water, it is a physical change and usually these changes are reversible. Only the physical properties change and no new substance is formed. On the other hand, if you burn a paper or a matchstick, what happens? From the ash, we cannot get back paper, which means it is irreversible. Then ash has entirely different chemical properties. So, not only the physical, but also chemical properties change and a new substance is formed. So, when a new substance is formed and both physical and chemical properties change and the change is irreversible like milk changing to curd or paper changing to ash on burning, then it is not a physical change, it is a chemical change. Now, what is burning of or this you can say what is the uh, what does candle do when we burn the candle then which change is it both physical as well as chemical because the burning part is the chemical change and the melting of wax is the physical change when milk changes to curd or when the food is cooked it is a chemical change when ice changes to water or water to vapor like in water cycle it is a physical change. Robert Boyle in 1661 coined the term element, but he did not define it. Later Antoine Laurent, he was the one who gave a basic definition of element. So, element he said was a basic substance which cannot be further broken down into its particles. Although today we know that elements are made of atoms and molecules. Now, the elements can be broadly classified as metals and non-metals. The metals are generally solids at room temperature, but of course, we have the variation that of mercury. So, first the metals, they are solid, 
hard then they have a luster a shine so they are lustrous sonorous that is they can create a sound that is why the bells are made of metal high boiling point and melting point malleable that means they can be hammered into sheets that is why we have sheets of metals then ductile they can be drawn into wires that is why we have copper wires then also gold gold one gram of gold can be really stretched into a very very long uh, tube or wire then they are good conductors of heat so all the cooking vessels they are made of metals and electricity so that is why the electric wires are made up of copper but both in the cases of cooking vessels and the electrical wires we find a combination of wood or plastic the handles of a vessel or of a spoon is made up of either wood or plastic and the covering of electrical wire is also plastic because they are bad conductors of heat and electricity and if we put if we don't have this wooden handles then it will become very difficult so our conventional vessels they don't have wooden uh, handles so we always are either using a tong or we are using a cloth to lift them or to move, remove them from the gas to the counter so it is very important that if we want a convenience then these things should be covered with some bad conductor of heat and electricity so here the properties of metals are being turned into various uses but all elements are not metals some elements are non metals non metals have all the opposite properties they can be solid liquid or gas at room temperature no luster of course diamond has everywhere there is an exception iodine is also lustrous then bad conductor here also there is a exception diamond has sorry the graphite is a good conductor of electricity so these are the properties of non metals they are not malleable and ductile there are third type of elements the metalloids which have both the properties of a metal and a non metal we started the discussion with one word and that is pure and we said pure here does not mean unadulterated then what is pure we know one thing that mixture is not pure then what is pure mixture is made of pure substances what are those pure substances those pure substances are elements an element is pure because it is made of same type of atoms and from wherever you may take that element it will have same properties for example whether oxygen is in air or in soil it has the same property it helps in burning it is a supporter of combustion but this is not all there is another form of pure substance and that is a compound
the compound is also made up of same type of molecules for example water water is made up of oxygen and hydrogen and they are combined together in the ratio of 1 is to 8 one part of hydrogen and eight parts of oxygen so from wherever you may take water it will have same composition same oxygen and hydrogen in same ratio I know you are not going to agree with me you are going to say sea water is so different in taste from tap water but whether it is sea water or it is tap water they are not the purest form of water they are mixtures because many different type of salts are dissolved in them the pure form of water like the one we get after distillation has only oxygen and hydrogen there are many such compounds like for to understand it a little better what you can do is you can take some iron filings and sulfur powder mix it how well you may mix you will be able to see yellow color somewhere gray color of iron somewhere then in another one you heat it and it will become a black mass and that will be iron sulfide now this is made up of two elements iron and sulfur which have combined in a fixed ratio as in the case of water hydrogen and oxygen always in the fixed ratio here iron and sulfur in fixed ratio and what they form is compound in a mixture like I gave you the example of India though people are together they retain their original or individual culture in a mixture also same thing happens the components retain their individual properties but not so in the case of a compound if you have taken this mixture and then you take a magnet near it what will happen the iron filings will be attracted towards magnet and when we clean it in another container we can collect the iron filings so the magnetic property of iron has been retained and by this method we can also separate the two because sulfur is non-magnetic so by using magnet we can separate the two but here if we take magnet near the iron sulfide nothing is attracted towards magnet because now it has undergone a complete change a new substance has been formed the color is also uniform it is neither gray nor yellow it is black which means physical properties have changed even the chemical properties have changed now it is not a magnetic property is not there iron cannot be separated so in a compound what we find is that the individual properties are lost not that in the case of a mixture so we'll put take a stand on this we can fix a funnel and put a cone shaped filter paper and then we pour this mixture of copper sulfate or the other mixture of potassium permanganate and copper sulfate and what do we find there is no residue there is nothing on the filter paper so this kind of mixture where the two components have uniformly got distributed they are called homogeneous mixtures like what happens in cosmopolitan cities like say metro cities like Mumbai or Delhi there are people from all kinds of communities and all kinds of states and they have mingled with each other there is no separate South Indian Punjabi uh, Karnataka and so on so they have become a homogeneous mixture right but in the third case where we had also put potassium permanganate there it is not the same there it is there are two components that are there so it is a 
heterogeneous mixture. Homo means same, hetero means different. So, when there is an equal distribution that is a homogeneous mixture and when the distribution is not equal then it is called heterogeneous mixture. And in a homogeneous mixture when we tried to filter it there was no residue left in the filter paper. Now, you take some sugar or salt, dissolve in water, what do you get? We call it a solution because salt and sugar has totally disappeared. Same thing can happen with copper sulphate as well. So, what is this solution? Now, this is not a solution of a problem. Here in chemistry, solution has altogether different meaning. So, what you can do is again take three beakers. put water in them. In the first case you put copper sulphate, in second case you can put chalk powder and in third case you put milk. Now, what do we find? Let us first take case of the copper sulphate solution. When we stir it, it totally disappears, although color is there. Now, in this case, we say that there is a solution. This is a solution. The solution has two components. One is solute, second is solvent. Now, the solvent is normally in the large quantity. It is in large quantity while the solute is in small quantity. So, when a substance taken in small quantity is dissolved in a substance taken in large quantity then it is called solute or in simple words you can say when a substance is dissolved in a solvent it is called solute like salt is a solute, sugar is a solute copper sulphate is a solute and what is solvent? Solvent is a substance taken in large quantity in which another substance taken in small quantity is dissolved like for example, water and you know water is also called a universal solvent or a good solvent. Why? Because in it many things can be dissolved. So, a solvent when we talk of normally the thing that comes to our mind is that it is a liquid which is true to only some extent that most of the times it is easy to dissolve things in the liquid form, but that does not mean there are no solid solutions. Solid solutions are there and they are called alloys. Alloy is also a kind of homogeneous mixture in this two or more metals and non metals are mixed together uniformly two or more metals and non metals are mixed uniformly. Example steel, steel has iron and carbon, brass has zinc and copper. So, here only two solids are being mixed, so it is a solid solution. Solutions can be of many types, for example, solid in liquid, example salt plus water 
or it can be solid plus solid alloy now one what, what happens when solid gets mixed up in a gas example is smoke unburnt carbon particles and sand and some other solid particles are mixed in gas then sometimes it can be gas in gas like air then it can also be liquid in gas as in the case of cloud mist fog the basic idea is that solution is not only liquid and solid the solution there can also be two liquids then there is another gas plus liquid gas in a liquid like aerated drinks carbon dioxide is there in water so this is also there then there can be liquid and liquid as in the case of sugar syrup and water like roux afza so these are some of the examples of a solution now what are the characteristics of a solution first thing is that why we are not able to see the solute particles the reason is that they break up into such tiny particles that we cannot even see them with naked eye that is they are only 1 nm very small particles Ten raised to the power of minus nine meter. Now, because they are so small, even if we put a beam of light on them, it cannot scatter light. Not not only the particles are very small; they are also very light in weight. so even if we leave a solution undisturbed the solute does not settle down so what does that mean it's a stable mixture and of course it is homogeneous so another feature of a solution is that it cannot be filtered so when you dissolve sugar salt or copper sulfate as in the first beaker you did you saw all these things you could not see particles then they could not scatter light if you threw a beam of light through your torch nothing will happen then even if you let it stay there nothing settled down sugar did not settle down and it was homogeneous uniformly distributed you can taste water from any side top or bottom or middle it will equally taste sweet so that means it has been uniformly distributed the moment we utter the word concentrated what comes to mind concentrated acid which we feel is very dangerous or even sherbat because it is almost nothing but sugar in syrup form so concentrated is you can say when there are more solutes per unit volume of a solvent and when we add water to it or a solvent then obviously the amount of uh, solute per unit volume of solvent is reduced because now there is more water for example if you dissolve 10 g of sugar in 
100 milliliters of water and in second case you dissolve 100 grams in 100 milliliters so which one is more concentrated obviously the second one because there is more sugar in same amount of solvent the when we add more water then what is it called dilute the main point about dilute and concentrated solution is that they are not in absolute terms they are only relative what does that mean now here this solution the first solution is dilute while second is concentrated but if i dissolve 200 grams in 100 ml then this will be more concentrated or in other words then this will become dilute so 100 grams and 100 ml is dilute as compared to c and is concentrated as compared to a just as you can say that in cities like mumbai or delhi human concentration is more than smaller cities or a village so it's just the matter of how much is present in how much concentration can be expressed in this way mass of solute divided by mass of solution or it can be volume into 100 now say the solute or the sugar that you dissolved was 100 grams and water was 500 grams so the weight of solution is 600 grams so how will we calculate concentration 100 divided by 600 into 100 now what happens when you keep on studying for long hours you say we are tired we are saturated now what is this saturation actually this word we use also for solutions you dissolve some sugar in water it disappears you add more again it disappears till it refuses to get dissolved any more now when no more solute can be dissolved then it is called saturated solution why because the space between the molecules is fully filled with the solute particles now what is the way out you want to add more you heat it a little some more sugar will get dissolved why go back to your molecules the moment molecules get more heat energy their kinetic energy increases and they move away from each other which in other words means more space gets created and so more solute can be dissolved now after we have heated it if we cool it now actually space was not there but everything has got fitted in now this is super saturated solution like it happens in a compartment of train especially the unreserved one when lot of people come in somehow initially there is lot of trouble they don't get adjusted but slowly slowly let two three stations pass and then everybody gets fitted in isn't it that's exactly what happens super saturated solution the moment they are fitted into those spaces then even if we cool the temperature they remain fitted now going back to our second solution not solution now we will not use the word solution the second beaker you had put chalk powder in it can you see the particles you can so if you can see the particles is it a solution 
no it is suspension so the most striking feature about a suspension is the particles are large and can be seen now because they are large if you will throw a beam of light it will be scattered you will be able to see the particles right now take another case where there was milk the entire liquid looked white actually milk is not a homogeneous you can say or it is not one substance it is another form and that is it is a colloidal solution colloids the colloids are in a way in between suspension and solution the particles are larger than that of solution but still they cannot be seen but they are large enough to scatter the light now sometimes early morning if you go to a forest or you go to a hill station how the sun rays trickle out of those misty air that effect can be seen in the case of colloids and that effect is called tyndall effect now the chalk powder when mixed in water you let it stay after some time it will settle down so it is an unstable mixture but in the case of colloids it will not so it is a stable mixture a peculiar thing about a mixture is that the components do not lose their individual properties though they stay together it is something like india we all indians who speak different languages who have different culture but still they stay together but still they also retain their individual culture so a mixture is something like that if required we can easily separate them through their language through their habits behavior and certain rituals we can easily separate them similarly in a case of mixture the components can be separated by their physical properties and by ph simple physical processes like boiling hand picking sieving and so on if the components are small in size or different in size then we can do sieving like say if wheat and rice are mixed we can sieve the bigger particles will remain on the sieve smaller will pass through or and same is the process in case of filtration if the color is different shape is different then we can hand pick and so on so by choosing a physical property difference we can separate mixtures so mixtures can be separated by physical processes and what is the basis of those physical pro processes differences in the physical properties that could be difference in their weight in their size shape color melting point boiling point and so on now the simplest method you can say is in the case of how we prepare salt you remember gandhi ji went for dandi march because we wanted to make our salt ourselves from sea water and britishers were imposing on us that we import it so what did gandhi do they he took some sea water and allowed it to evaporate and what was left was salt so one simple method of evaporation 
can help us separate a solute from its solvent solution or a solid from a liquid. So, you can take in a watch glass salt solution, when you will heat it, then water will evaporate and what will be left is just salt. So, near the sea there are alleys or the pits when high tide comes sea water gets collected over a period of time water evaporates and salt is left behind which is collected, but it is not pure form of salt. Now, if we want pure form of salt we have to do something else. So, then the next thing that can be done is we can do filtration. By filtration we dissolve that salt in water, filter it. So, the dust particles and other things remain on the filter paper and then we get pure salt solution which is then evaporated and we get pure salt. There can be another way of getting pure form of a solute like say copper sulphate. You take some copper sulphate, dissolve it and then evaporate, so that it becomes a saturated solution. You leave it for a while and what you will get is copper sulphate crystals. This method is called crystallization. By this method we can make crystals of say alum a saturated solution of alum is prepared in a beaker then we hang a small crystal of alum in it and heat it slowly slowly the crystal will increase in size because all the alum dissolved in water will get deposited on the alum or you take copper sulphate solution, heat it, it will become saturated solution and then it will change to crystals. So, this method is used to get pure form of a solute. So, second advantage of crystallization is preparation of pure salt and getting crystals of alum or copper sulphate. This is another method for separating substances. In the case of suspension, what we found that particles or the solute were heavy. So, they settled down right. So, in that case the particles were heavy, so they settled down and we can use the method of sedimentation. That is how we purify water or muddy water can be made purer if we use the method of sedimentation. But what if the particles are not heavy? Just as in the case of milk, we say, we say that it is a colloidal solution and the particles are not so heavy, they are there it is not a suspension, then what do we do? You know what milkmen do when they want to sell you cream? They just churn it like you churn your things in mixy. When you want to make cold coffee or you want to make lassi, what you do? You churn the mixture in a mixer and if you continue to do so, if there is malai that you have collected and if you continue to churn it after some time butter separates from the butter milk and butter is lighter in weight. So, it will not settle down, it will come on top. This method is called centrifugation. Centrifugation means force is moving outside. So, when in a mixer it is the liquid or the mixture, liquid mixture is mixed then the solid particles float on top. So, what is the application of this method? Separation of butter 
from milk. This method is also used in certain tests like blood and urine test. And same procedure is used for in the washing machines. In fact, in Punjab and Haryana, many farmers use washing machines for separating butter from milk because it is in large quantity, mixer will not be good enough. So, the principle for the mixer or the washing machine is same. All liquids are not soluble in each other. Some liquids are insoluble and the term used for that is immiscible like oil and water. Oil cannot dissolve in water. In fact, that is the reason why bile is useful in the case of digestion because fats cannot be dissolved in water. So, they need bile, bile emulsifies fats. Otherwise also when you cook at home, in a curry you will find oil or ghee is always floating on top. Why? Because it is immiscible, number one. Number two, oil is lighter than water. So if in a lab you want to separate oil and water, you can use a special type of funnel which is somewhat like this. There is a stopcock. We put the mixture of oil and water in it and let it stand for a while. After a while, oil being lighter will come on the top. Then you can put a beaker below it, open the cock, water will flow in it. Once the water has totally gone out, you can change the beaker and collect oil. This kind of funnel is called separating funnel. So, the application of this method is that oil and water can be separated. And even when we are extracting iron from its ore, the waste which is called the slag is can be removed by this method. During extraction. Now, what is sublimation? Sublimation is when a solid directly changes into gas. And in last chapter we studied there are some such volatile substances like naphthalene, camphor or ammonium chloride. Now imagine if you have a mixture of a substance which is volatile and a substance which is not. So what you can do? Do sublimation, heat them, the one which is volatile will change into gas and move out and the one which is not will remain there. Something like say there are two friends, one gets angry very easily, other does not and you want to separate them, irritate the one. The one who gets angry easily will move away, will storm out and who will be left? Only the other one. So, another method can be sublimation. For sublimation, You will take the mixture in a wash glass, cover it with a funnel, plug it with cotton, fix on a stand, heat. Ammonium chloride will sublime and will be on the neck and salt will be left behind. So, when you remove the funnel, this is where you will get ammonium chloride. And in the wash glass will be salt. 
so just by having to know the difference in their physical property can be useful in separating them so even when you want to separate people if you know their basic nature you will be able to separate them but why should we do it